Why is Bitcoin not breaking the 64K level? What is happening? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi, guys. In today's video, talking about the news, giving you amazing charts, and of course, an inspirational quote at the end. I will try to keep it below 10 minutes as my day is fully busy at the moment with uh, Didi Bam Bam. So go check that project as well. Now, let's quickly jump into the news first. The news today, guys, there is so much news today, but the thing I want to talk about is, why is Bitcoin not breaking the 64K level? What is happening to Bitcoin? Why did it not already push through the 64K level all the way up to 70K levels? Why is this not happening? Now, I wanna to try to give my opinion what is happening at the moment and why Bitcoin did not yet move now. And let's be very clear. It's just the beginning of October, October. It's not the mid, it's not the end. It's the beginning of October. Now, first of all, at the moment, there is a lot of doubt in the world. The moment we gave all these institutional investors access to Bitcoin, they started to accumulate Bitcoin. So that means that a lot of these institutional investors now also hold Bitcoin. And they are not used to the Bitcoin way of doing stuff. They are used to the traditional world of investing, stocks, bonds, etc. So the moment that the world is not like certain and nobody knows what is gonna happen, at that point, we are in uncertainty. That is the moment they play the game a little bit more safe. That's the moment they stop buying or maybe even start selling a little bit. And that is exactly where we are now. We have a war, Russia against Ukraine or Russia against the United States, let's say it like that. Then we have another turmoil there in the Middle East. We have Israel and Palestine. And then we have now also Iran and Israel. So there's a lot of situations in the world that doesn't make people happy. And it doesn't give the people a stable feeling. And aside of that, we have two presidents running for president in the United States uh, that also oh, doesn't make the people really happy because it's like not stable. They don't know who's gonna win. Is Kamala gonna win? Will it be positive for crypto? Or is Trump gonna win? We all know that will be positive for crypto. So there's too much doubt in the world for people to make up their mind. They are too busy with all that stupid stuff, like, for example, presidential elections, like, for example, these fake wars all over the world. Because believe me, these wars are all economical wars and they are all being created by the same group of people. It is not those countries that want to fight each other. It is other people that are starting these wars, that are starting the hate between those two groups in a particular place on the world. So that means that economical people don't have any direction. They wanna know sure, ah, is Trump or Kamala gonna win? They wanna know sure, ah, is it gonna be the third world war or not the third world war? So all of those situations contribute to people not feeling safe to do investments or do investments in store of values, like for example, gold or real estate, and I think more and more also Bitcoin. And that is why we are not breaking a 64K. So that's one of the reasons. That's the institutional investor part. Then we have the second part. The second part is the retail investors. For all those that don't know what retail investors is, retail investors are you and me. Are just the normal working class people. I'm not considering myself as the working class people, but it's the working class people uh, that just want to buy Bitcoin as well. It's not banks, it's not institutions, it's not professional investors, it's just normal people. They are not buying as well at the moment. And the reason that they are not buying at the moment is that at the moment, first of all, they had like shitloads of inflation in the last couple of years. Which means, if they had inflation, they are not that rich at the moment. They need to look how they can even buy their groceries or if they can even save up for a beautiful holiday. They don't have too much assets to spend. And they also read all the negative news about the war, what is happening everywhere, etc. So they just don't want to take any risks with their hard-earned money at the moment. Because there's no FOMO yet, Bitcoin did not create new all-time highs. So those normal people are not stepping in the industry yet. Because they always step into the industry exactly at the wrong moments. They step into it when it's too late. So that factored in that the normal retail investors are not buying because one, they don't have money. Two, they, they watch all the news and they are in fear. 
They don't know if the World War III is going to be happening or that P. Diddy did all kinds of weird stuff or that whatever they are talking about is not about protecting their capital against inflation because they are not educated in the right way. They are educated in the schools that you and I also were educated that don't focus on how to build capital and protect capital against inflation. They only focus on how to make just enough money to get around every and each month. And sometimes if you do something extra, you will be allowed to do a holiday as well because then you have some extra funds. That is the retail investment part. They are just too busy with stupid stuff and they just don't have the extra funds at the moment to invest. So now we have two groups of people that are not investing because there is no FOMO. Now this is always the case in this period in the four year cycle because there is a lot of doubt. It's always the elections that happen during this part of the Bitcoin bull market cycle. The United States elections, which are still considered as something very important. I don't know why, because if you look at all the videos, it doesn't look the most positive country for me to live in. But still, it will have a big influence on the world, guys. And that is just making people doubt. But there will be a moment that Bitcoin will start to rise again. And that people will start to believe again. And that President Trump will become the president again. And he has a very positive mindset about Bitcoin. So yes, when he has a very positive mindset about Bitcoin, that will also change the mindset of the most United States people again into a positive mindset, a positive economy. And that will change as well the investor mindset. That will lead to more people not being afraid anymore to invest because now they have a certain life. They know who is going to be president. They know the wars will be stopping. They know or they think they know that everything now is going to be okay. And by then, probably Bitcoin already went up like to 80K, 90K. And that is the moment that those people will start to buy. Sadly, that is the moment of resistance where Bitcoin will drop again. And then they think they will be in loss and they will take their losses. That's what always happens. And then they miss the massive bull market all the way in 2025 to a top. For all the guys, yes, the beast is still empty, but uh, it's less empty at the moment. Uh, today, we have Bam Bam Booty Beach and even a horse walking on the beach, guys. So yes, for you guys out there, I know you like that. So let me switch the screen again to something way more beautiful. <laughs> now, guys, so that is my take on uh, everything that's happening at the moment. So my take is it is not the end of the bull market. We are just finding resistance at a 64, 65K level. We will break that resistance very soon the moment there is more certainty in the world, the moment we know who is the new president, the moment we know that the wars are not happening, like the Third World War, etc., 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 then we will get some more air to breathe and people will start to invest again. And then believe me, the spot ETFs will grow even faster because a lot of these people want to buy into these spot ETFs when the economical system is more stable. That is the mindset of institutional investors. Retail will also then start to buy because then the newspapers and the news channels will be full with ah, Bitcoin is again making a new all time high. Bitcoin is again going higher and higher. My face will be again on the news television shows. My face will again be in the newspapers. Yes, this guy sold his house. You should be doing the same, blah, blah, blah. But that's too late. You should have been doing this already, guys. Now, that was the news for today. I hope you enjoyed my take on this situation at the moment. I hope I could take away a little bit the doubt because I always tell you to zoom out. And in my opinion, after this next bull market, you will not be able to buy Bitcoin back at these levels around 60K. Maybe in the next bear market, a wick into these levels of 60K. So buying now is the same as buying in the next bear market. And the only difference is that now you can still make profits in this bull market. Now let's jump into the charts to show you a little bit more how that looks like on the charts. And yes, guys, the first chart, of course, uh, is not a chart. It's Bam Bam, guys. DDBamBam.com. Go visit the website. Go read the white paper. Go read the concept. Go understand the educational value that you're buying into as a community because you will be leading this whole Didi Bam Bam platform in the future, guys. Now, the first chart is this one. This is the four-hour chart. I told you yesterday, resistance. We will come back to the green line. We will go sideways. The Bollinger Band will start to uh, compress again and then we will move again to try and fight that yellow line around 64K. 
There's a huge line of resistance. That's what we just talked about in the news. Uh, also, not only the news influencing it, but of course also the charts. TA is TA. T is always leading for me, but the news does have an influence on bigger moves or bigger dips or whatever you call it, uh, dumps. But like the news is not as important as TA, but still it has a small influence on the mindset of the traders as well. Now, here we can see this is resistance. Why? Look to the left. Here is what's resistance. You can see every time we touch this line, it's resistance, resistance. We try to break it, but still resistant. Then we came above it, bam, down below it, resistance, resistance. Finding support, now going for resistance. Hopefully we break it and then we take it to there. And then again, you will come back. And then we take it higher. That's how Bitcoin normally moves. Now on the day channel, we can see something really cool happening. This is a day chart. Every candle is a day. We can see this green line will soon start to try and break that red line. It is the 50 day moving average crossing the 200. We also refer to this as a golden cross. These golden crosses don't happen often. If we go back to in history, I will go back to just show you. This was a golden cross over there. And at the moment we did this golden cross, we went from 20K all the way to the highest point, 31K. That's a 50% run. Then we came down here again, a golden cross. I hope you can see it. I will draw there again, the golden cross. We went from 28, bam, all the way to 73, 50K run. This was a dead cross. When we go down below with the green, that's a dead cross, bear market. Let's go back a little bit further. Here, golden cross. This golden cross was in 2020. We went from, let me see, 9K all the way here to 63K, death cross. And that's how you can see in the whole history of Bitcoin, let me zoom out, there has been some golden crosses. It's a little bit messy now because there's a lot of drawings on my chart. I need to clean my shit up sometimes. But check here again, even the bull market before that, guys, the 2017 top 20K, we started with a golden cross, the green going above the red, and that, bam, set off a golden cross. That golden cross was already at the Bitcoin price of 370 US dollar, 370 US dollar. That is when that golden cross happened, 20K. So yes, if you ask me, at the moment, this golden cross that's starting to build up again is important. I have not seen this green line, this bumpy before. Normally it's a little, a little bit more fluid, but still, if the green will go above the red, that's a golden cross, and that's a bullish sign for Bitcoin, a bullish move. That's also when that MACD will go green again, and also when the RSI will have been bottoming out and going up again. So very positive. On the weekly chart, we can see also what I told you already a few times. There's a resistance in this pattern. We could pull back even to that red line, which is now at 52,000 US dollar. Don't be fooled, it's 52K. Uh, but I don't see that happening. I see support in this green now, and from there bouncing up and trying to break those levels. RSI, maybe I should remove my drawing so you can see what I expected. I expected those moves to happen. And you can see the RSI is pulling back to that midline area, and then bam, we will go and rise again. Here, from red to green, we still need to do, but when it happens on the weekly, it's very bullish. I told you already a few times, every time when it happened on the weekly, huge moves massive moves when it happened over here from red to green it's the last time it happened we went from 30k all the way to 70k that's a 40k move when it last time happened the time before was over there is when we went almost from the 16k bottom here to 30k also almost a doubling in price so let's see what happens now now i have a few more amazing charts let me jump into them over here this is the first one my face needs to be gone um, on this one Capriole Investments, the Breath 200, that's a blue line. And you can see that it's in correlation with the Bitcoin price. Whenever that Breath 200 is low, like now, that's accumulation phase. That's green. You should be buying. Why? 
because if we are high with these lines, that is when Bitcoin is stopping out. That is when Bitcoin was stopping out. Here it was when Bitcoin started to top out. You notice these are the moments you sell. These are the moments you buy. You're breathing, you need to buy Bitcoin because there will be a massive move afterwards. Look what happened after the last time. Here there was green, bam, we went up from 30K to almost 70K. Here from the red area into white, bear market bottom all the way 16K to 30K. So just understand that this is a moment not to doubt, this is a moment to zoom out, this is a moment to buy. Then we have this chart, the Scalping Pro. I found it also on Twitter. This is, of course, the Wall Street cheat sheet, so as you can see over here, which takes you through all the phases uh, as a trader, which means we go all to uh, psychological uh, phases when we are trading. I will put my face uh, somewhere here, a little bit smaller. And that is a little bit uh, explained with this chart. So let's see, we have euphoria, that was the previous bull market top, complacency, anxiety, denial, panic, capitulation, anger, that was the bear market bottom, depression, disbelief, it's never gonna be a bull market again. Ah shit, maybe it will be a bull market, hope. Optimistic, now, yes, it's a bull market, we are gonna go higher and higher and higher, and that is where we are now. We are in this optimism phase. This phase over there, optimism. From that phase, we will go into this belief, thrill, euphoria. Whenever you start to believe more, and your neighbor starts to believe more, and your aunt and your kids and everyone else starts to believe more, that's when you know, ah, this is gonna be a steeper run in the bull market. And then you feel thrilled, and you feel, wow, this is gonna be higher and higher and higher, I'm gonna be a millionaire. Then you know you're nearing the top. And then euphoria is, okay, I'm gonna buy my Lamborghini, I'm gonna buy my house, I'm gonna buy my kids a Lamborghini, whatever, that's euphoria. Sell, that's the end of the bull market, that's the top. Really cool chart by the Scalping Pro, of course, uh, based on the Wall Street cheat sheet. And that were also the charts for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed them. Give it a thumbs up. And yes, I turned around. I hope you really enjoyed the charts again. Short term, again, yes, you could see a lot of volatility. You could have done good trades. Uh, our signal was sadly stopped out with a stop loss. Sadly, a minus, I think, 9% uh, trade. So yes, the signals are all not always perfect, but that's always with trading, guys. Some you win, some you lose. You need, just need to make sure that the winners are bigger than the losers, guys. So yes, um, long term, nothing is changing long term it just looks amazing bitcoin long term charts if we look at the weekly the monthly charts even the yearly charts they all look amazing guys they all look like bitcoin is going to pop very soon into this new bull market in 2025 at the second or the third part whatever you see it as uh, of this bull market and go to these new all-time highs and will crush all our feelings again about ah shit we should have bought Ah shit, I can't believe Bitcoin just surpassed 100k. All of that is going to happen in the next 12 to 15 months. You just need to make sure you're in Bitcoin. Don't go all in if you don't want to go all in. I think it's still the best thing to do. But if you don't want to do that, please just make sure that a lot of your savings are in Bitcoin and not in euros or dollars or any other shit coins because those will make you poor. The ones that live on euro and dollar, we consider as poor. The ones that live in the Bitcoin standard, we consider as the generational wealth rich ones for the future. That's the difference, guys. Now, let's jump into the last part of the video, the inspirational quote. The inspirational quote for today, guys, is about something that is very small, but also very big. Because attitude is a very small thing that makes a big difference in life. An attitude can be positive and negative, let me be clear. People with a very negative attitude will have a very big negative influence on their own life, but also on other lives. People with a very positive attitude will have a very big influence in a positive way on their own life, but also on other people's lives. And I think the attitude of people is too often influenced by money. The moment money is a very important role in your life, that is the moment when that money can control your attitude. And sadly, that happens to too many people. Do you know that whenever you go to very poor countries, there is something also now in the screen, guys, for all the girls and all the women. Yes, there, also for the women. I'm not only thinking about the men. But just imagine that every time when you go to a very poor country, people live in the cheapest houses, whatever it is, and they are still smiling, they are still happy. 
they are not controlled by money. Yes, they see money as something that will buy them food or a roof, but they are not fully controlled by money. The Western society is fully controlled by money. If they don't buy the iPhone 16 today, they don't belong to the community. If they don't buy the newest Nikes or the newest shirts or jeans, whatever brand it is, they don't belong to the community. So that Western society that is very materialistic, that is being controlled by money. And the moment you're in control by money, there's the moment that money also will control your attitude and will make you or very negative or very positive. And I know what I'm talking about because I was there. I am part of that materialistic world. I grew up in a materialistic world. I am educated in a very materialistic way. And I know that money always had an influence on my inner. When I had a lot of money, I was way more happy. And when I was, had less money, I was way more poor. But by now, I, I think I disconnected money from my happiness. Yes, of course, it's still fun to earn a lot of money, but it doesn't control my happiness anymore. I'm happy with my cheap printed shirts from my own shop. Here on the beach in Phuket, I don't need a millionaire Lamborghini or whatever it is to become happy, guys. There's always horse riding here in the mornings. Look how beautiful. Yes. Horse riding. That attitude also is a very big problem in the Bitcoin industry. Because people always think that projects or different groups of different communities are competition, they are competing against each other. But that's of course not true. That's not true. I believe that the attitude in this industry should be we collectively against the centralized governments, against the centralized banks, against all the centralized entities that try to control our lives. That is the Bitcoin mindset. And if you belong to team A or B or C or D or X, whatever team it is that is contributing against the fight to that centralized entities, you belong to the same team. Just compare it to football or basketball or any other sport. In the Netherlands, my friends, ah, they are for Ajax. Other friends are for Feyenoord. Other friends, like me, we are for PSV. But whenever the Dutch national team plays, we are all together. Same in the United States. You know, you can be for the Bulls or the Knicks or whatever names they all, the Raiders. I don't even know all the names of all the sports teams in the United States. But when the national team plays, you're all together. And that is how we should treat Bitcoin and all their communities. I have my community, the Bitcoin family. MM Crypto has MM Crypto. The Moon has the Moon. Da Vinci has Da Vinci. They all have their own communities. And we all should be happy for each other that we all have our communities. But collectively, we all should have that same peaceful fight in our mindset. We against those centralized entities. Not throwing mud at each other, because that is what they want you to do. They want to divide and conquer. So they want to divide our communities in a normal life, but also in the crypto life. That's what governments and centralized entities do, divide and conquer. But in crypto, we should be smarter. We know that they are doing this. In crypto, normally the people are there that are thinking a little bit more about life that understand that those centralized entities only want to do one thing, and it is divide and conquer. We as a crypto community should be one. And it doesn't matter which community you belong to, collectively we fight in a very peaceful way against those centralized entities that want to have control on our lives and want to create a social credit system based on a central bank's digital currency, etc., etc., etc. We don't want that. We want a freedom future for ourselves, for our children, and for all the other next generations. And that is the reason why you should be in crypto. And of course, you're also here to make some profits. And yes, I'm happy when you make profits and every community has its own way to make profits. Please join that community that feels best for you. Please do it. Make some profits, make yourself richer, hold all your capital in Bitcoin, accumulate as much as possible Bitcoin, your capital will grow every four-year cycle and you will be able to disconnect more and more and more from that centralized system that we collectively are fighting against. Because the more we use their currency, the more they will be in control. The more you start to use our currency, Bitcoin, the more we will become in control. And let them print a shitload of shitcoins, fiat. We will also receive them and we will buy Bitcoins with them. 
And that is how we transfer the traditional wealth into this new wealth, Bitcoin. And that's how we slowly let the economical system from fiat currencies evolve to cryptocurrencies. And the more we educate our children and all other people about that, the sooner that will be happening. And exactly that is the reason why I started DiddyBamBam.com. Go and look on DiddyBamBam.com because if you like what I just told you, that platform is going to do exactly what I just said. We are going to grab education by the balls and educate peoples from the beginner steps till the end what Bitcoin is, what cryptocurrency is, what the mindset of Bitcoin, the communities is, and how you can use it to set yourself free to create a gateway to freedom for you, your family, and the next generations. That is what the Didi Bam Bam community stands for and all is going to educate you about. Now, that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the news, the charts, and this last part? Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Wednesday and see you tomorrow again. The links to everything that I want you to sign up to are down below my video. There is a shitload of bonuses, a shitload of free money to grab if you just use the top 10 links down below my video.